Hello everybody, Patrick Nichols, and before we talk about this car here, which is another unbelievable find, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for all of my Facebook followers and all the people that say uh, message me in with all the kind words and make the, the, uh, the kind comments on my page. Um, this, all of what I do wouldn't be possible without you, and I really thank you. Uh, please be patient, those who email me or private message me um, about their car. Um, every one of you are uh, very important to me and I try to, to respond as, as, as quickly as I can um, to give you an answer whether we have something that is uh, worthy of magazine publish or something that we want to proceed um, and write an article about for a story. Um, for those of you that don't know where to follow me, you can follow me at Patrick Glenn Nichols Muscle Car Barn Finds or my personal page at Patrick Glenn Nichols. An email is pnichols26 at Yahoo and um, so just keep uh, sending me those uh, requests and we will go from there and, and uh, again I can't thank those enough so what do we have here we have an unbelievable 1970 Chevelle LS6 that is probably the lowest mile uh, tuxedo black LS6 in the world uh, this car just surfaced here recently just outside of Pittsburgh Pennsylvania um, the owner um, had sadly passed away and I heard about it through a friend and I made arrangements to come up here and cover the car and possibly purchase the car as well. The car come factory with white stripes if you noticed they're gold now. The original owner did not like the white stripes with the saddle interior which is tan and decided from day one that he wanted to have the stripes painted gold. Uh, this car had 1,092 miles on it. Yes, 1,092 miles, um, which is unbelievable. Um, probably the second lowest LS6 car in the world and the lowest tuxedo black LS6 in the world with only 1,092 miles. Um, I do normally do a total walk around video from behind the camera. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have noticed that I'm in front of the camera this time, which I've had a lot of requests to do. Um, so uh, a video in front of the camera which I'm definitely not opposed to that so I hope I have uh, pleased those that have uh, requested that and I will proceed now with the camera and do a total walk around video of this car so um, please forgive me for uh, uh, disappearing out of the camera for a second to grab uh, the camera okay here we go. As you can see, the cowl induction and the gold stripes and the old school original USA 1 plate, which is definitely hard to find. That's a late 70, 71 model, so evidently it's been on this car from day one. This is a Baltimore, Maryland assembly plant 70 Chevelle, which we've covered those before. So they have their own little characteristics about a Baltimore car, and I'll raise the hood now and address some of those features. Now this car has your normal day two mods with only 1,092 miles. And Baltimore cars are, like we've talked about before, are known for their plastic inner fenders, which their particular supplier was the version with the left hand and right hand inscribed into the inner fender so those inner fenders are still present and are not cracked surprisingly so this car is very very in very very nice shape and baltimore cars are also known for their hood pin cable location where they put them under the bolt whereas an atlanta or van nuys would have been up here Kansas the most of the other assembly plants put the location for the hood pin cable where I just showed you cars factory with 1919 which is tuxedo black upper and lower and we will describe the cow tag 
which is very dark in here. So I don't know if we can describe it all, which we got 1970, 13637, two door hard top. And remember, the B is for Baltimore, and Baltimore is the only plant that used their data processing number in box 24 as their body number, but it is not, but it is not the body number. We've been over this before. 770 is saddle, bench seat interior, 1919, tuxedo black upper, tux, a tuxedo black lower, 03C for March third week, and the rest of these figures, the B and the D, and these, I believe that's 02 or 94, those are data processing numbers that are not significant. Again, we've talked about that before, not significant to us. This car does have the original engine, trans, and rear. This is a 410 Paz attraction car, an M22, which was standard with the SS454 package. And as you can see, this car has the four row radiator, which carried this little tack welded metal flange to hold the larger radiator on the driver's side tank. And you can see the factory BB master cylinder and correct power brake booster. Car still retains the 060 upper pulley, the 291 lower, and the 105DD power steering pulley, all of which are high performance deep groove pulleys and the 837 alternator, which is dated 9H, which would be August of 69 which falls in line for a March car. It's six months behind, but it's still correct. This car again has 1,092 miles. The last time it was inspected in Pennsylvania was in the year 1976. Unbelievable car that was unknown up until just a few days ago. And you can see the saddle bench seat interior, which, which is 770 trim. Car does, is equipped with U14 um, instrument tack and gauges. Special instrumentation is referred to quite commonly. And maybe you can see the 1,092 miles, which is right there. And you can also see the AM 8-track stereo, which carry the two speakers in the dash and the two speakers in the rear for the 8-track stereo. All 8-track radios, AM or AM, FM, were stereo radios. And you can see the, the gold stripes on the rear and the 1975, the last time this car was registered. Really, really, really unbelievable. I know that word unbelievable and amazing is used too much, but it truly is unbelievable. Those of you who know how hard it is to even find a nice super sport car understand how unbelievable it is to find a 1,000 mile car that is 48 years old and an LS6 454 truly is amazing. And you can see the shifter has been changed for a Hearst shifter, which is very common with the day two cars. And for those of you that don't know what day two means, that means the, the common modifications that just about everybody did right after they bought their car. So that would be day two. Day one would be brand new, and day two would be the common modifications that a large number of 
owners did to their car. So those things would be uh, things such as headers, aftermarket intake, and aftermarket carb, aftermarket shifter, so on and so forth. Very common. Um, and of course, all LS6 cars come with smog, with the, uh, the pollution equipment, and that those items were normally taken off very, very fast, especially for a car that accept we're going to accept the day two mods for the headers because the smog worked in conjunction with the exhaust manifolds. Again, this car is surfaced here just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's been in Pennsylvania its entire life, was purchased new in a place called Messamore, Messamar, Pennsylvania, right outside of Washington, Pennsylvania. 1,092 documented miles with build sheet and the original bill of sale is here. Really, really crazy. I mean, if you think about it, 1,092 miles on a 70 Chevelle. Original paint, aside from the stripes, the original valve covers are still in place. The original engine is dated March the 5th, which definitely falls in line with a third week of March build date for this car. The 70 valve covers are here, which you can see the tab for the TCS switches, TCS switch. And then you see the tab, which is in front of the bolt hole, which is one of the determining factors that you look for on this side. And a lot of things are still present with this car. As you would expect for a 1,092 mile survivor type car. And the car still smells new in the interior. Steering wheel has been changed. Um, they did not come with a tan steering wheel. That was something that evidently the owner preferred. Um, the car had a standard black steering wheel when it was born new. And an interesting feature on this car is the B22 Dornlum SS is not present on the build sheet, but at Baltimore, evidently, some assembly line worker decided the car was to get the S's no matter if the B22 option was not on the build sheet. That's my opinion on why those S's are there. Otherwise, I don't care to speculate any further on that. Beautiful car been manufactured by GM General Motors um, sticker is still in the door jam and the car is virtually intact except for some of the minor components that go in the engine bay again which I like to, to keep Reiterating where I'm at and I am in just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is where this car has surfaced recently The owner has passed away that owned this car since 1973 up until about January of this year Preserved this car all of those years He was the second owner the original owner is the one that is responsible for the gold stripe, not the second owner. And I will lower the hood now so you get a better idea of the stripes, which are definitely painted over gold. Very, very cool car just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a tuxedo black 1970 Chevelle two owner car that has surfaced just a few months ago here. Um, the original, the second owner has passed away. And I am here to cover the car. 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of this unbelievable car and more videos on the way. Thanks.